Do you have a PDF that you want to track through XAPI? Well, I have a template that's going to make it a whole lot easier, and we'll get into that next. All right, welcome back. My name is Jeff Batler, Learning Dojo. And if you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. And here you can check out blog posts, previous blog posts with tips and tricks. You can also download the template and the template that we're going to be talking about today, along with other templates from my website. And you can go through courses, full courses, everything from A to Z, Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Articulate Rise, Custom SCORM, and HTML5 Video. But today we're going to be covering how to track a PDF with XAPI. Now we are going to cover a template that will allow you to track any PDF through XAPI. Now I have created in the past uh, the ability to track a PDF through SCORM. So if you wanted that, you can go ahead and reach out to me about that template. I haven't posted it yet, but I'm working on that. But this one will at least allow you to track XAPI. So I'm already on my website and I've already downloaded this PDF XAPI wrapper. I have other templates where you can track like video, both from YouTube and Vimeo, also being able to capture the name from Storyline. Now I've downloaded this package already and this is the folder that you get. Inside of here, there is an index.html. There's some instructions as well. And we're going to change a couple of these different files. In order to change these files, we do need to have a text editor. A text editor is something like Dreamweaver or Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code and Sublime Text are actually free. Dreamweaver comes part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Now I'm going to open the entire folder up inside of Visual Studio Code. If you don't have Visual Studio Code, you can just Google search Visual Studio Code and download and install it for free and follow along with everything that I'm doing here. Now this works on a Mac or a PC. I have it downloaded on a Mac right now and I already have Visual Studio Code. You can see right there. And all I have to do is take this folder and drag it down to Visual Studio Code. Or on a PC, if I just pull up Visual Studio Code and drag in the folder, into Visual Studio Code or go to File, Open. There's a couple different ways to kind of open this, but we want the entire folder structure so we can navigate through the different files here. With this pulled up, you'll see over on the left-hand side all of the different files inside of that folder. The first one I want to edit is this index.html. Now I'm going to hide this real quick and pull up the folder again. You'll see right here under the Assets folder, there is a PDF. Now this is a PDF of a slide presentation that I gave a while ago. And it has several different pages in here. And you can use that PDF. And in fact, if you name your PDF the same thing and drop it in here, you won't really have to change much here. But I have this new PDF that I wanna drag in here. And so I'm just gonna drag that in. And then I can delete that XAPI workshop just by right clicking and going move to trash or send to trash basically on a PC. But I'm gonna go back up a step here. And now what we need to do is pull up in Visual Studio Code. And inside of here, I'm gonna go down to line 52. Line 52 is where it has that assets folder and it was pointing to that PDF. That PDF is no longer there. I've replaced that PDF. So we need to point to the new PDF. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that XAPI content and that slash. And then I'm going to just have a slash there. And we just need to have the exact name of that file. So going into the assets folder, I'm going to copy the entire name of that file. And I'm going to come back in here and just paste it. I don't have to copy and paste. If you just want to type it out, you can just type it out. But it just needs to be that exact file name. And it needs to have this folder because essentially what it's doing is it's we're working with the index.html. And it's saying, hey, index.html, this is how you find the file. So you go into the assets folder and then you go find a file named module three slides, basically. Now you can see data completion text that will say complete, completing, and completed successfully. You may now close the window. I can change that if I want to, and then I can come up here. This is what will show in the tab when the tab on your browser will show. This is what will show, so you can update that as well. Do not get rid of the title tags in front and in back of that title, just update it there. Now the rest of the code is this modal. This modal will pop open when the learner first launches this PDF and it will ask them to enter in their name and their email. And that's how I'm identifying who the person is because when you're sending over statements, you need to know who the person is and that's the actor. 
Now you may want to modify this if you're gonna grab the actor from a single sign-on. You can do that as well if you're working with Okta and this content is behind a single sign-on, you can grab who the person is and store it that way. But for now, I'm just gonna grab it through their name and their email. If I preview this, I'm gonna go ahead and click on live, go live. If you don't see that option, you could come into the extensions here and search for an extension called live server and then just enable that live server. And then once you do that and you go back into like a file like index.html, you'll have this go live option, which will then launch your course. If you don't want that, you don't have to have that. You can actually just open up the folder and just double click on index.html and it will do the same thing. This just makes it so anytime I actually save the index.html, it will automatically update the preview and I don't need to hit refresh. All right, so going back in here, here's the experience. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my name and then I'm gonna type in my email. Now it's sending over XAPI statements to my learning record store at this point. You're gonna to need to update that with this template. But for now, if I go into SCORM Cloud and then I go into XAPI LRS and then go into LRS Viewer right here, this is where I'm gonna just switch this over to Sandbox here. This is where this is gonna be sent over. All right, so keep that in mind. As soon as I start to go through this, it's gonna to start to send this over. So right here, Jeff Bat started the XAPI Viewer. Well, how do I change it to my learning record store? How do I get the information from my learning record store in order to send this over? We're not quite updating this, but if I come back into the preview, it at least shows that I've updated my PDF. And you can see the title, the tab title right up here. All right, so let's go back into Visual Studio Code and let's talk about what else we need to update. If you wanted to update anything about the modal, you can update it here. But I'm gonna go into the JS folder and I'm gonna go into the main.js folder. Now the object name is this XAPI viewer. If I go back into the learning record store, that's where I get this information from, XAPI PDF viewer. If I wanna change that, I just, within the quotes, do not get rid of the quotes because it'll mess up the code, but within the quotes, I can go ahead and delete that and I can change it to PDF on harassment or PDF on, not actually how to harass people, but PDF on preventing harassment or, or ethics or anything like that. You can change the title here and that's what will get sent over as the statement. But this is important too, the object ID. Every learning interaction has an ID. That's how Learning Record Store identify kind of the data source. And this was one learning interaction compared to another learning interaction. And when you're creating custom reports inside of the Learning Record Store, that's actually how you get and associate two different learning interactions together inside of that dashboard. So it's important for you to come up with this. And usually it's your company name followed by XAPI, and then you can kind of target down to what you want from there, like departments, and then the name of this activity. So I just have that there to begin with, but you can go ahead and type it out wherever you want. Now you can see some other variables that you should not change. This is basically a sample username and so forth. But if I scroll down here, I'm gonna scroll down to right here. So if first page, and so if it's the first page, it's gonna send a statement and it's gonna send over a started verb and then it's gonna have the phrase of the user started and then have the object name and the PDF. So that's how I'm sending over the statement. I'll show you where that statement's actually structured and you don't need to edit this part. I'm just showing you that it's flexible enough that you can actually go in and you can edit this if you're familiar with JavaScript. But right now it's just tracking the first page and it's tracking the last page. If you wanted to track other pages, notice this commented out code right here, which you can just get rid of that right there and this right here. And now what it will do is it will send that basic statement. And I just have to pass in the verb ID, the verb name, and then the object here to describe more of that object or what's, what's getting passed over. All I have to do is put that in here and now it's gonna track on page three. So if there are specific pages of the slides, you can just go ahead and copy that, paste it, and now change, if you wanna track page four, change that to page four, and just enter in the ID, the verb, and then describe the verb from there. So it's really pretty easy to go in and update it a little bit. You don't need to be 100% familiar with code in order to do this. It, it is there for you to go in and update as needed. As you can see, I'm bringing back the comments, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save that for now and then I'm gonna scroll down to the very bottom. 
Now this is the function send basic statement. This is how I'm grabbing the username. This is how I'm, or the user email. This is how I'm grabbing the username, the verb ID and so forth. So if I wanted to edit how the statement is being sent over, this is where I would come in. All of the other times that the statement's being called, it's basically just passing in some information and then it will just place that information where it needs to go inside of here and it will send the statement. So I can add on to this and I can customize it however I want here. Now, if you're gonna grab a single sign-on, this is where you would place the variable from the single sign-on rather than the variable from just the, the modal that pops up. Completely flexible. I'm giving you this code. You can just go ahead and run with it. Uh, if you're working with a web developer, I'm pretty sure they can pick up on it and approve it and everything. But that's really it. I mean, from here, now if I come back into this XAPI viewer, I'm gonna say Sammy McGee. I'm gonna just type in my name here, jeffbat at gmail.com, hit save user info, and then I'm gonna start going through these different pages. And like I mentioned, it's tracking that first page, but it's not tracking anything else unless I added that function, other functions, until I get to the very last page. As soon as I get to the very last page, it will send over a completion. So right here, you can see completing, it's now completed. There's that message that I can update. If I go into Scorm Cloud and hit refresh, you can see Sammy McGee completed the XAPI PDF viewer. So as simple as that, the code is as flexible as you need it to be. If you go through my XAPI fundamentals course, you can get a, a greater handle of XAPI and how to structure those statements. But if you just need to like swap out the PDF, and to change some of the labels, it should be fairly easy if you go back and review this video. If you haven't checked out any of my other videos, you can go to my website, learningdojo.ninja. You can go into my blog and check out all my other videos. You can see other templates as well, XAPI and Storyline templates. Here's where you can find my full courses, everything from A to Z, Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, and that covers everything that you need to know about the JSON structure, the, the statement structure, and everything like that. Articulate Rise, Custom SCORM, and HTML5 video. But I want to know, what other templates do you want to see? Do you want to see a, a PDF that's just a long scrolling view? Do you want to see more video types of templates? Do you want to see uh, a custom template for just HTML content as well? What other templates do you want to see? And comment down below on my YouTube channel of what you'd want to see. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps out my channel as well. And you'll be notified of all future videos that come out. But that's all I have for today. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone.